Hi everyone, I am back with another episode of the Inside Crypto Podcast. I am so glad to be back. It's Monday, despite the very red weekend in the market. And you can see our DFI index token is also not looking that great. But I'm still here, I'm happy. The world hasn't ended, despite what many people may think that the world has ended with uh, poor returns all around for pretty much everything, red everywhere. But anyway, uh, today is going to be the first episode of a new segment, relatively new. Because as you can hear at the moment, we have three tokens. Right? We have the DeFi Momentum Index, the DeFi Index Token, and the Polygon Ecosystem Index. So what I am now going to do is the Pico episode is going to be every second Monday. It's still going to be called Last Week in Pico, and this is going to be called Last Week in DeFi. But this is going to focus on our DeFi Index Token, and when we launch our Soli Index Token, it will be our Last Week in Soli. If I have time, I might try to keep it at a bi-weekly cadence. But it might switch to a tri-weekly cadence. So every three weeks, we talk about one of the index tokens and the news for the constituents. So if you don't know about DeFi, let's look at it very quickly because we have a lot of news, as you can see by all the tabs open on my browser. Our DeFi index token is right composed of the top eight DeFi tokens in the Ethereum ecosystem by market capitalization or market cap. DeFi provides investors with exposure to protocols that provide trading, lending, and borrowing, yield farming, data articles, insurance, prediction markets, and synthetic assets. Okay, my fault. So these are the things we're going to be talking about today. Liquid Staked Ether, AMP, Graph, Chainlink, Aave, uh, Loop, Pring, Coin, V2, Uniswap, and Curve. Down. Now, the order of these things and their respective allocations have changed. As you guys know, with last week in Pico, I tried to do things in the way it is in the allocations over here, so from top to bottom. So today it is not going to be like that because I prepared for this show based on Saturday's allocations and the percentages change every now and then. But anyway, so the first thing we are going to talk about today is the graph. So you've probably heard about the graph from our research lead, Ellie, when he was on the podcast, from Karim, another researcher when he was on the podcast. So the graph, the Google of blockchain raises $50 million in round led by Tech Global. The protocol indexes data across 26 blockchains. That is a mouthful, right? The graph, a startup that likens itself to Google, right? So they themselves, right, say we are like Google, raised $50 million. $50 million is definitely no small amount of change. A large amount of connective tissue is needed to make blockchain-based next generation of the internet, known as Web3, function properly graph to connect everything together which is really cool and very positive for the graph and something for everyone i guess maybe so the graph is token was trading at 48 cents at the time of publication so everyone's token is pretty much down right this is three days ago so it might be even less we don't know so let's go look at the graph website right apis for a vibrant decentralized future the graph is an indexing protocol, right? So you guys know Google, right? Google is an index of the internet for querying networks like Ethereum and IPFS. Anyone can build and publish open APIs called subgraphs, making data easily accessible. I would highly suggest you go back and listen to Ellie's episode where he explains what the graph actually is because he, he has a very cool analogy and I don't want to mess it up. If I get a chance, I might actually cut it into this episode. Subgraphs can be composed into a global graph of all the world's public information. This data can be transformed, organized, and shared across applications for anyone to query with just a few key. For anyone to query with just a few keystrokes, you can see the programming over here. Say goodbye to custom servers. Uh, Web three is a Web three is a new stack for a radically better internet. All data is stored and processed on open networks with verifiable integrity. Uh, the graph makes querying this data fast, reliable, and secure. Like security, of course, is a problem. And here, this is a very cool graph that explains why this is so secure, right? Encrypted private data, public data. I like it a lot. Uh, so much is getting built. Entrepreneurs are creating next level apps to scale human coordination on the internet. It's a new frontier and we're just getting started. DeFi, governance, grants and philanthropy, social entertainment marketplaces. On a shared neutral foundation by combining Web3 protocols, developers can build dApps with powerful new features for solving the world's greater challenges. So we saw a lot of that towards the end of 22. Our last two episodes of the podcast have talked about the things that are going to be happening, the challenges that crypto is going to have in 2022, besides the market being red, of course. And I think the graph is going to be playing a key role in all of that. So 
you can see right avalanche uh, polygon phantom arbitrum optimism moon river on polka dot very cool okay so this is the news for the graph basically more money more ways for them to expand and do more of what they want to do and integrate all the blockchains together and maybe they can even in include a solana at some point in there okay let's move on to the next thing is how to stake eth with lido on layer two so you guys know me right i am the community manager at the moon you know that i am an eth farmer and I have been since 2017 unfortunately when i got into crypto i did not know a lot so i staked my eth on an uh, on an eth 2.0 contract in binance which is earning like six percent interest what liquid ETH is basically when you stake your ETH on Lido Finance, and we're going to look at that just now, it gives you something back. So you still have custody of your asset and you can actually do stuff with it. And that's cool. So this sort of explains how to do that. And I regret doing it. But unfortunately, like everyone else who has staked ETH in ETH 2.0, your ETH is locked until ETH 2.0 launches. Like it mentions, there's currently over 6 billion being staked via Lido on Ethereum. Ancient integrated leader on layer one. So this sort of explains how to stake ETH on layer two. And layer two, of course, you know, is cheap, much cheaper than layer one. And especially with the way the market has been, Ethereum gas fees are through the roof. When I was looking on the weekend where things were really in the red, the gas fees were, for most transactions, were $100 plus, no matter what you wanted to do, right? Again, as usual, right, all articles for everything we talk about in the last week in X series uh, is going to be in the show notes. So if you have ETH and you do want to stake it in an ETH 2.0 contract and get that liquid staked ETH, uh, you can do that and have a look over here on the Argent website on how to do that right now. Okay. So let's look at Lido or Lido Finance, right? So it just says it shows you ETH, how much ST ETH, right, staked ETH you will get, the transaction cost, your reward fee, right? Annual percentage rate, FAQ, what is Lido? Lido is a liquid staking solution for ETH 2.0 backed by industry leading staking providers, Lido or maintaining infrastructure while participating in on chain activities, example lending. So it's like you get to have your cake and eat it too. You get the return from here, you get to use it in other places as well. This explains how it works. It's a very comprehensive FAQ and it's not very long. Like these are short pieces of text if you're like me. If you're busy or you're lazy, you don't want to read lots of stuff, I would highly recommend you consider Lido as a possibility for staking your ETH if you do want to get that liquid staked ETH and do something else with it. Okay, let's move on to AMP. Now, AMP is relatively new for me as well because I am not familiar with it, actually. So as far as AMP token it goes, so it says, AMP is now available on Vault Official with full support for trading, lending, borrowing, and saving trade AMP via AMP USDT or AMP. INR is an Indonesian rupiah and 1% with Vault Savings or use your tokens to collateralize a loan at 200%. Get all the details at vault.com. All right, so I've never heard of any of these things, but I'm lending is very popular on Aave. Lending is very popular on a bunch of these other sort of lending and borrowing platforms. So let's have a look at what AMP is. So let's take money into the 21st century. AMP provides assets like CUSD with instant verifiable assurance for any real world application. So stake your AMP, right? send, repeat. AMP is an extensible platform for collateralized asset transfers. By staking AMP, any form of value exchange can be guaranteed digital payments, fiat currency, exchange loan distribution, and more. Once staked to a partition, AMP is ready to collateralize transfer. So that's pretty cool. AMP helps you decentralize risk for your users with smart contract features, purpose built for collateral. So collateral for loans, nothing more, nothing less. Collateral as a service, extensible and open source, always very good, easy for everybody to understand. Non-inflationary. When new projects adopt AMP, Existing implementations benefit from increased liquidity and decentralization, right? That's a core tenant of the crypto ecosystem. Asset agnostic. AMP doesn't discriminate based on consensus mechanism or form of asset. Uh, very cool. The AMP white paper is here for anybody who does want to read it. Meet their friends and collaborators. Gemini, Coinbase, Balancer, all the famous names, Crypto.com that you probably very familiar with okay so this is amp so now let's have a look at what vault is build wealth automatically with crypto earn borrow trade very similar to what amp is all right 
earn interest on your crypto, weekly payouts, withdraw any time compounded, interest earned is compounded every week or at the end of the fixed term deposit. Uh, their APY rates are not bad, right? 6.7% on Bitcoin, 1% uh, on Flow, 1% on Phantom, 12.68% on TUSD, which is a TerraUSD, which is not bad at all. XRP at 6.7%, uh, Stella at 3.4%, Basic Attention Token at 3%. I would compare this to Celsius. I compare this to Nexo as well. Platforms, if you give them their money, they probably do something with it and give you an interest rate in return. Um, I might actually have to look at this myself because some of these do look a little bit better than Nexo or Celsius for that matter. So this is Vault. I wish I knew who Vault is. Well, let's have a look at about us so we can see where they're from. Uh, this is, says what Vault is, the origin of Bitcoin, Alan Greenspan. All right, let's look at leadership. We're going to see who they are. Ah, oh, they're an Indian company as well. Darshan and Sanju Sony, Korean uh, co-founder and CTO. Okay, very cool. I like it. Lots of these companies really are headed by Indian people, which is interesting. Okay, let's move on to Chainlink. We've done two episodes on Chainlink pretty much on the podcast. And I wish Kareem was around to talk about this, but he's talked about this on his Chainlink episode. Basically, this sort of article from Seeking Alpha basically explains why Chainlink is a good token. Again, let me remind you guys, anything said in this podcast is not financial advice, but this article goes to say why Chainlink is going to do really well in 2022, why it's still a very awesome token to own, why it's something you should consider buying if you are interested in Chainlink. And uh, Curry mentioned a CCIP cross-chain interoperability protocol, and bridging chains together. Currently, the market seems to be shifting funds into coins with supreme technology. Many tokens such as Atom, Phantom, Luna, Avalanche, Dodge, and Shiba. Oh, oh and Avalanche and have pumped, while Dodge and Shiba have dumped. Uh, Chainlink seems to be a sleeping giant, right? You guys have probably all heard that. $75 billion total value secured. Off-chain stuff. Uh, 700 plus total Oracle network. If you're somebody who's in the Chainlink ecosystem, you're probably really happy with what's going on right there. And Chainlink powers a lot of the stuff that I've talked about for the past few months doing the podcast. And my wife is a big Chainlink owner as well. She is a big fan of them. I used to have Chainlink when it was very cheap, but I sold a bunch because, of course, being too fast to the trigger finger of selling stuff. And there's the graph shows 2,900% increase. Uh, Beacon chain staking is implemented. Oracle network growth, right, that we talked about it already, right? 772 oracles in quarter four, 2021, like a year ago. Let's look at quarter two, quarter four, 2020 to quarter four, 2021. So they've grown 600 plus oracles. And yeah, that is impressive. And oracles are the thing that pulls all the data. All right, uh, it says the cryptocurrency market is maturing and funds are quickly shifting to functional, scalable, and secure Web3 networks. Within this market, it is best to look for finished projects with real utility. And people will always tell you that about crypto is you need to find projects with that have utility for you to invest in. Okay. All right, let's move on to our next component of the DFI index token, Lens Protocol. Okay, so this is about Aave because Aave is the constituent of the DeFi index token. Kulichov has been teasing a play at a decentralized social media for most of the year. So you guys probably watched this last year. Aave had their little event and they talked about decentralized social media, which was very cool because at the moment, Facebook, very centralized. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, all very centralized. And that's the idea of Web3 when we go, again, going back to a previous episode with Gnome, right? that in social media, we have the, the idea that as users of a social media platform, we have ownership of our data. We have ownership of the content we produce. Like I'm a content creator for Amun, right? And Amun, or basically Amun's a content creator and they should have ownership of the content they produce. And this is saying that Lens Protocol might be the project that Ave hinted at, but we're not sure because they haven't come out and said it exactly. The link goes to a simple site that contains a short letter expressing dissatisfaction with Web2 social media companies such as Facebook and Twitter. The letter says Web3 brings forth a renewed hope for what social media can be. This is hardly a first attempt to create a more decentralized social network. Efforts along these lines have been coming out 
nearly as long as there have been blockchains. Some of the more prominent examples have included Steam, right? Uh, Steam is related to Hive. And again, we spoke to one of the guys building a podcast platform on Hive, which emphasized blogging, Feedweave, which is built on Rweave, and Sent is an experiment in selling content. Last November, FTX is Sam Bankman-Fried. I think social media on the blockchain. I continue to think that this could be absolutely huge. I think it solves a lot of existing pain points, which are really coming to the forefront of society right now. So definitely read the original story from The Defiant. I might actually link that down there. All right, let's move on to Uniswap. So uh, Uniswap plans to deploy V3 to every Ethereum compatible chain. So uh, Phantom, right? An Ethereum compatible chain. Binance Smart Chain and an Ethereum compatible chain. So after Uniswap community voted unanimously to deploy the V3 protocol on Polygon in December, the Uniswap Labs team is finally looking to expand on similar requests from the community, which led them to this decision. And any chain that is compatible with Ethereum, as the Uniswap community is considering deploying V3 and other chains, the Uniswap Labs team took charge to make this process easier and release the deployment script and documentation. So this is looking good for Uniswap, right? Because Uniswap on Ethereum is very expensive. We just talked about gas fees a few minutes ago on this video. And if they move on to Phantom, they move on to BSC, gas fees would definitely drop significantly. And I think a lot of people, myself included, would be very happy to be able to swap for the hundreds of tokens they do support at a very low cost. Okay, and that's pretty much all this news is about. What does this say for Ethereum? Right, it says the fact Uniswap handles over 11 billion in volume every week makes it clear why investors are preferring chains like Polygon that cost less in gas fees, right? Because Uniswap or Ethereum makes a lot of fees from it. Let's move on to Curve. So for Curve, there wasn't any significantly interesting news I could find. Basically, this is a proposal to raise a parameter on FEI three curve pool to 500. This does something right, which is, so it says here, Raising the A factor will reduce volatility for larger trades and positions the pool better for more integrations with other yield strategies and further liquidity injections. So again, Curve, they have their DAO, which controls things. And it's really good because when your community is involved, that means the project is going well, everything's working the way it's supposed to work. And a lot of these style communities, there are the whales who do trade a significant amount of money and large volatility will push them away to other solutions because uh, volatility causes you to lose money. And even if you're well and you have lots of money, you probably have lots of money because you are very good with money and you don't want to waste your money in volatility. So let's have a look at what Curve is for people who don't know. I just had a listen to a talk last week, Friday, about what Curve is. Curve allows you to swap between different things, swap using curve pools, dive for USDC, uh, swap stable coins. You can stake your coins, earn some APR as well. You can see USDT plus wrapped Bitcoin plus wrapped Ethereum. You get 4.35% plus 2.33% total APR, right? 10.87% volume, $104 million. So it's definitely a solution you should check out. Unfortunately, low, ooh, so Curve is on a bunch of different platforms, right? Arbitrum, Avalanche. Curve is an Avalanche, which is what I did not know as well, which is very cool. So I might, I might have to look into that because I thought Curve was only on Ethereum, which is yeah, not what I expected. So definitely something to think about whatever network you're on. So it supports yeah, Arbitrum, Avalanche, Phantom, Harmony, Optimism, Polygon, and XDAI. I didn't realize XDAI was a network. Okay, so this video is running long because we do have a ton of stuff to talk about. So forgive me for that, but we're almost done. So our last piece of news for today is about Loopring, uh, Loop Ring or Loopring. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. We're now live with Bankshare Official, giving you more direct layer two fiat options. Japan, South Korea, plus many more regions are now supported to onboard fiat direct to Loopring L2. A web app, very cool. Fiat Unrams, we've talked about this on podcast before. I'm a big fan of them because I believe they are essential for getting regular people. People like me, I'm, I'm irregular and regular at the same time into ecosystems. So we just plug in our debit card or plug in our credit card and make our purchases on crypto. And let's have a look at what the Loopring actually is. So the Loopring is a ZK rollup layer two for trading and payment. Why Loopring secure high throughput because Ethereum is pretty slow 
Dopamine brings highly scalable decentralized exchanges and payments by batch processing thousands of requests off chain. So batch processing means putting a lot of stuff together and instead of it being on the Ethereum chain, putting it on somewhere else with verifiably correct execution via ZKPs. All right, this performance of Ethereum is no longer the bottleneck. Uh, low cost. And I've talked about ZK rollups before, right? Uh, ZK rollups for Ethereum miners allowing us to mine Ethereum and get paid daily with very like low gas fees or even zero gas fees would comes with with zero gas fees depending on the rollup solution but loop ring layer two there's the app over there that's very cool so now let's look at that almost sounds like the the xa sounds like the chinese word xia um okay local compliance and payments for the digital asset industry right cool bit Kobe, my bank shot is the best, greater than 1 billion transactions, 700% year in growth, most payment methods, maximize conversions, the most ways to pay. That's really cool. So they support Hobi as well, which is really nice. Blockchain Australia. So basically they are a yeah, fiat on ramp for crypto people. Yeah, I can create an order right now. I'll put in how much USD I want and get some on Bitcoin and what do they support? BUST, Link, Chainlink, Mana, Ethereum. So they basically offer a lot of the major stuff you could then go and use in uh, Uniswap or go to another place and then make an exchange there or even available in 136 countries and counting. That is very cool. Let's see what countries they support. I don't think they mention it right here. But yeah, so that is it guys i hope you enjoyed the first episode of the last week in dfi so next week will be last week in pico and then in two weeks time we'll have another episode of last week in dfi if you have any comments or thoughts please join us in telegram or send me a message on twitter send a moon a message on twitter please share this on social media so we can get more listeners more viewers for the youtube video and as usual the video will be up a day after the podcast, maybe a day and a half. We'll see how things are going. All right, guys, thank you and take care and chat to you later.